Welcome to Ladies in Tech with Lauren Deal and Kelly Mack, a show by women for women, breaking the IT stigma by empowering, inspiring, and highlighting ladies in tech. Let's join the ladies in the studio now for today's episode. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Ladies in Tech. I'm Lauren Deal, joined with Kelly Mack. Hello and Sophie Goodwin. Uh, I am a teacher of 10 years, a TV host, and also a tech enthusiast. But Kelly, tell us a little bit about how you got into the tech field. All right, well, I started off um, in radio, and if that's not the most technically challenging job, I don't know what is. But um, I've been doing that for about the last 15 years, and I decided to kind of pivot. So I've done social media, PR, radio, and now I'm doing tech, and I love it too. Uh, joined with me is Sophie. Well, uh, I actually am studying telecommunication right now, so that's kind of how I got into tech. A lot of the tech that I work with is cameras and computer software programs, things like that. Um, but I'm also a TV host here as well and getting ready to start here full time. Excited about that. And I've been taking some courses here as well about IT fundamentals. So definitely trying to get more into the tech field. Well, IT Pro TV has so many certifications, and so we're all going through that journey together. But the mission of Ladies in Tech is to empower women to either enter the tech field or inspire them to rise within. So thank you so much for joining us. Today's topic is going to be talking about artificial intelligence, and we actually had an incredible interview with a woman who is a PhD at University of Florida. Her name is Eva Agapaki. And so let's check out our interview and find out more about artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. We are so excited to be joined with a special guest today. We are. It's always good to have somebody in the studio, live, and not virtually. Yes, <laughs> yes. All right, so um, with us today, Eva Agapaki. Uh, mm -hmm. You study over at UF. You're actually working on a project about artificial intelligence. Exactly. Yeah, so let's Great. start by saying, where are you from originally? <laughs> I'm from Greece. Greece. Crete, actually, oh. an island in Greece. Okay. Uh, and I've been traveling around the world to, for studies and work. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I have a background in civil engineering. I started uh, with a civil engineering degree. Uh, so I didn't have an exposure on AI at that time. Uh, then I continued with uh, geotechnical earthquake engineering, so how we design uh, earthquake resistant homes mm -hmm. in California oh, wow. and then um, I was very I'm very curious by nature mm -hmm. I love learning and exploring mm -hmm. new technologies yeah. so this is where uh, for my PhD in engineering mm -hmm. uh, in the UK actually I was introduced to these um, tools and algorithms mm -hmm. and the power of them was what intrigued me <laughs> the most yeah. to actually pivot my career to AI that's awesome. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> Just the, the, the series of events that led you to where you are is fascinating. Yeah. And I'm also hearing a couple different locations that were brought up in the origin of your story. Right. Yeah. So you've studied in the UK, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. And so. you're from Boston, uh -huh. or you moved to Boston. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, but now you're here in Gainesville. So mm -hmm. tell us about the progression of how that happened. Yeah, so uh, I had uh, I originally started in at Cambridge uh, mm -hmm. in engineering for my PhD, okay. uh, and then uh, I won a fellowship to move to MIT in the computer science department because of the nature of my project that involves an intersection of AI in civil engineering. Yeah. So that's how I moved to Boston. And then after working a couple of years in tech companies in Boston, uh, there was this opportunity at UIF uh, with uh, this huge partnership with NVIDIA and the, the shift towards uh, AI across disciplines mm -hmm. in the curriculum and research. So uh, I really wanted to be part of it. Okay. Uh, so that's how I moved to Gainesville and UF uh, oh to gosh. start projects that are related with AI. Okay, and you know what, I love it, Lauren, because you're not from Gainesville, I'm not from Gainesville, <laughs> Eva's not from Gainesville, but the point that I'm hearing here is sometimes you gotta get out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. and go out and get where opportunity exists. Chase and your job, chase your dream. This is exactly yes. what she did. You have uh, truly progressed through your career, but um, now you've landed in AI at UF and they just built a $15 million research center is that correct? Exactly. Mm -hmm. yes. Wow. 
So tell us about what you're doing there. What kind of projects are you doing? Mm -hmm, sure. So I have a research group. I'm the director of the Digital Twins of Infrastructure Systems mm -hmm. Research Group. So uh, th there we research on how to build digital twins. Okay. Uh, and I will explain what that is. Of complex systems, so like bridges, uh, um, airports, uh, industrial wow. systems, and all of that using AI technologies. Wow. So you're building bridges, you're helping to build bridges and airports with artificial intelligence. Exactly. To, to, to help build them better, more yes. sustainably, mm -hmm. uh, and lower costs and reliably. Okay. Uh, that's how AI helps yes. this discipline. So th this is where exactly my research lies. Okay. Uh, and uh, in terms of like we build their digital copy mm -hmm. because it's like uh, it's like a digital world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this term is not new. It was introduced by NASA a couple of decades ago. Okay. But in the built environment and, and engineering disciplines, it's very recent. It's about five years ago that mm -hmm. digital twins were introduced. Okay. And we need to have these digital representations so that we are able to make better decisions mm -hmm. for these systems because no one wants to have accidents or um, uh, serious repercussions because of poor maintenance of these systems mm -hmm. and there's actually a huge investment on infrastructure bill at the moment so that urges further developments on using these technologies for these types of mega projects mm -hmm. and this is exactly where my research lies and partnerships with industry to improve these systems to, to better maintain them mm -hmm. using the, the power of these uh, artificial intelligence tools. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> Just thinking about how this, you know, has evolved even in the last five years. Yeah. But when I think of artificial intelligence, I think of robots. Yeah. And so maybe we should kind of backtrack and talk about what is AI yeah. mm -hmm. versus machine learning versus deep learning. What is it? <laughs> Great. So in layman terms, uh, AI is um, a system that can have multiple human um, capabilities, okay. uh, like sensing or making decisions or even seeing and, uh, and reacting. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are multiple fields, exactly as you mentioned, Lauren, uh, on robotics. Mm -hmm. uh, robotics is a subfield of AI. Mm -hmm. Uh, as is computer vision. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, ML is another subset, mm -hmm. uh, of like algorithms and systems that um, we can um, use to uh, infer better decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, and over time, they become better and better mm -hmm. <laughs> with the assistance of humans, right. of course. Um, and uh, it is exactly the, these patterns that we recognize uh, when we, we use uh, all this wealth of data mm -hmm. that uh, makes this system so powerful. Mm. And then in terms of um, deep learning, uh, this is um, a very convenient and practical way of thinking about ML, but on larger scale. Mm -hmm. So we have these huge data sets now and databases that uh, in multiple disciplines, that's how um, this field has become so um, popular uh, the, na nowadays. Yeah. Uh, and and that's, that's why these algorithms have uh, become more mature and uh, more evident and there is this uh, wave of uh, these new technologies across yeah. uh, different disciplines. Yeah. So the uh, the ones that have been uh, ad um, advanced mm -hmm. so much, uh, and we can think about finance, about marketing, uh, autonomous vehicles are the most evident ones mm -hmm. where like they, there is this huge wave mm -hmm. of, right. of AI. Uh, but then there are also less uh, uh, obvious fields and um, disciplines. Mm -hmm. Uh, like law or design, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, it, it, these technologies are just emerging, but they're going to be like a huge boom in, in wow. these industries. What yeah. a neat time to be watching <laughs> and interacting with AI just to see the evolution. But <laughs> when we talk about AI being such a vast uh, net, if we will, that we're throwing over so many different possible career paths, what might be some like common misconceptions about AI? Mm. Because when I hear about that, immediately I'm like, oh my word, 
should I be worried? Yeah. But I think mm -hmm. AI has more good than potential harm, right? Yes, exactly. And that's a great question because um, there are a lot of ethical um, implications mm -hmm. of, of using this technology. Uh, for example, what about a, a system that uh, that using an AI tool can predict an outcome that is uh, incorrect, mm -hmm. and then we have uh, losses because of that? Yeah. Uh, so in those cases, uh, would we attribute this uh, mistake to a human operator mm -hmm. that has created the system, or the actual AI system? Itself. Right. So we always need uh, a human that will validate the output of Got these al algorithms. We cannot expect because AI is a tool mm -hmm. right. that will improve uh, and solve problems yeah. of humanity, mm -hmm. rather than being the actual um, changer mm -hmm. uh, and being the actual uh, central entity right. that will take these decisions. Uh, so th this is a one, th there is a field of um, uh, AI that uh, involves a human computer interaction and there has been a lot of research on that mm -hmm. to actually uh, improve these uh, processes for the better of uh, humanity. Trying yeah. to make living easier for humans, right. not eliminating humans. And I think, you know, there are so many sci fi movies out there that give the doomsday impression, but in reality, <laughs> there's someone like Eva behind the scenes who's trying <laughs> right. to help us live better lives with the help of AI. Right. Um, this is incredible. You talked about some of the projects that you were working on, but now I'm curious, for a woman who is maybe thinking about entering the AI field, what certifications or degrees would you say for her to start in? Mm -hmm. So, if um, for young women, this is a great opportunity to mm -hmm. enter such an emerging and booming field. Uh, and uh, if, they, if they don't have a computer science background, for example, mm -hmm. where they would learn like all the coding fundamentals and and math skills or problem solving skills, then I want to say that there is. Uh, there, it, there is a potential to switch uh, mm -hmm. their career towards AI by applying for uh, like data science degrees, mm -hmm. or also the, like there are so many. There's an, an ambience of online sources uh, on data science, mm -hmm. so th there is opportunity mm -hmm. uh, and uh, hope. Uh, like I also yeah. didn't start as a computer scientist. Mm -hmm. I switched my career towards computer science because of this. Uh, uh, because I, I nurtured uh, learning and, and, and I had the passion to continue learning mm -hmm. these uh, tools and fundamentals. So there is a hope as soon as there is a will to Definitely. learn and em emerge yourselves uh, in this field. Okay, do you see a lot of fellow women in your um, profession? There are, but still not so many. Yeah, yeah. But it's growing. But it's, it could it could do a lot better. Yes. Got it. Got yeah. it. And we actually talked about that one day on the show. Yes. You know, just the lack of presence by you know women in general in IT and tech. So you know that's kind of how and why we created this show to you know explore different uh, tech careers and feature different phenomenal women like yourself to talk about your career path and how you got there and so on and so forth. So that brings me to a personal question um you know how do you balance you i mean obviously you are very very busy in the workplace <laughs> how do you balance work versus your personal life and and your family do you have a balance or are you still working on that <laughs> still working on it no. okay okay <laughs> it can be uh, difficult when when you're successful you know and and you know you have goals in mind so um i know it was difficult for me um managing the two so you know i always like to ask that question but it it's definitely something we should all strive for, a good, healthy balance. <laughs> well, and especially if it's your passion, it's probably hard to turn that off at yes. night. Mm -hmm. You probably think of one more thing, you're jotting, you probably have a notepad next to your <laughs> yeah. bed. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think as a woman, if you're passionate in what you're doing, uh -huh. it's really hard to separate, you know, church and state mm -hmm. or work yeah. and, and um personal time. Right. But, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm sure that's something we could all work on. But Absolutely. <laughs> I'm thinking of, you know, when you talk about women getting into IT mm -hmm. and just how we're trying to push more women to step into this space mm -hmm. and to take ownership of the sciences and the maths. What was your favorite subject when you were in elementary school or high school? <laughs> Science. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know it. <laughs> 
I'm sorry. I, I seen it on her face. It was like across her forehead. I was in a science. But if she said social studies are writing, I would not give, you know. Right. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, I loved science, but particularly math. Okay. Uh, and for my undergraduate uh, thesis, actually, I, I, I was developing uh, mathematical equations for designing earth resistant, earthquake resistance, uh, building foundations. Okay. So that's that's where it all started yeah, yeah. <laughs> with the, uh, with the math uh, passion, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, it evolved towards uh, AI through a lot of pivoting yeah, yeah, <laughs> in definitely. my career. And you mentioned that twice, as far as you know, helping out with um, the artificial intelligence behind um, mm -hmm. earthquake resistance and the foundations of buildings and so on and so forth. What is the one thing in your career thus far that you are most proud of? Something that is just a badge of honor for you. <laughs> um, it is actually the the moment that uh, I I realized that because I, I was a very um, intimidated in mm -hmm. terms of entering uh, a computer science field okay. and I thought it is really hard and I could not make it. Mm -hmm. uh, it and the the moment that I realized that this is true and I can do this, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that that was life changing yeah. uh, in a way because and I see that with a lot of women mm -hmm. and because of the male dominated field mm -hmm. uh, that uh, th this is difficult mm -hmm. in in a, in a lot of ways uh, but <laughs> uh, I was very happy because also working in in, in, in the tech industry uh, I, I was able to like uh, see my ideas uh, become uh, much, uh, products mm -hmm. uh, and and see the real impact and I was not like, I could never imagine that I would have uh, these uh, this passion for right. for for a field that in the past seemed like so difficult to mm -hmm. to enter uh, so so that was the the, the, the moment that, that I became very very proud for for what has happened that's awesome so yes. it was a moment for her you know <laughs> yes. and some people you know they have different highlights and different mm -hmm. achievements and she's like the moment I realized I became proud of my work Wow, is all I can yes. say. Well, we got to get her on as the woman of the week. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah. I definitely want to wow. highlight you more. Yeah. Um, but advice to a woman, because I imagine that, me personally, I feel like stepping into a role where you're unfamiliar, mm -hmm. you can almost get imposter syndrome of, am I good enough to do this? Mm. Can, I, can I push through these barriers? Should I pivot and do something that I know I'm capable of doing? Mm -hmm. Would you, could you offer some advice to our viewers? If they are entering the tech career or their tech field and thinking, I'm not sure if I can do this, what would you say to that woman? So I, w I was actually exactly on that position. And I was very fortunate to have some mentors that um, helped me navigate mm -hmm. uh, this, this space uh, and, and gain this confidence uh, that I can do this. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would also recommend, uh, so I, first of all, I would recommend like having also like a mentor group. Mm -hmm. uh, and that would include some male advocates mm -hmm. for, for women that, that will help um, uh, help them on the way um, and the, my second advice is related to uh, reading a book that was very important and there is also a, a group uh, around Lean In uh, oh. they're a Lean In organization mm -hmm. uh, founded by Sheryl Sandberg uh, and that has been also instrumental from in terms of like seeking challenges uh, and uh, not being afraid to take the risks uh, in this career because it, it's definitely it's not easy. Mm -hmm. However, uh, with determination and the right peer group around you as, as a, a young woman, it, it is possible. And then mm -hmm. you will be amazed by what you can achieve. I love that. Yeah, me well, too. Let's put that book up on the screen so that you can <laughs> try to grab that for yourself as well. But 
Eva, this is fantastic. Yeah, we appreciate you joining us and visiting the studio. I mean, who would have knew? And, you know, I mean, I am absolutely intrigued. Like, I want to read the book now. Yes. <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, if someone who's watching is interested in jumping into AI, mm -hmm. coding is a key element of that as well. Right. It is. Um, Python is a course that we offer at IT Pro TV. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you would recommend? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Python is the um, language mm -hmm. that is widely used yes. for ML. Uh, I'm machine learning and deep learning uh, tools. Uh, so learning the fundamentals, like starting with the beginner's course and then uh, developing on top of that with those skills is absolutely the, the right path to, okay. to go. So that's a good starting point. Yes. Let's put that up on the there screen. You, you can it. actually click at the bottom of the screen and check out uh, IT Pro TV courses and uh, start your Python journey and possibly follow in Eva's footsteps. But Eva, if they were to follow your journey and maybe want to ask questions, how can they find you? Maybe social media or LinkedIn? How can they reach out to you? Mm -hmm. So I mean, they, they can reach out via LinkedIn or Twitter uh, or uh, the, my personal website as well, or via email, of course. So we can share my details. Excellent. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, you definitely shed some great light. You shared some great knowledge. And uh, I have a feeling she's inspired quite a few out there. So thank you so much for joining us on Ladies in Tech. Thank you. My pleasure to be with you. Back to you in the studio, Sophie. Wow, what a great insight into what Eva does over at the University of Florida. I'm sorry I couldn't be here in person for that, but it was great to see it after the fact. Lauren Kelly, what did you guys think about being able to talk to her in person, kind of about what she does there? And I learned a lot. How about you, Lauren? Fantastic interview with Eva. I have to say that she was um, very impressive with her resume. Going from Cambridge to MIT to now down to University of Florida, it's really neat to know that behind the scenes of artificial intelligence, uh, there is someone who is holding the ethical beliefs um, of regulation and governance for artificial intelligence. And knowing that AI is not something to be scared of. It's in something that's actually going to enhance humanity. So I felt like this interview really gave me a peace of mind, but also made me excited for the next boom of technology. That's something right around the corner. Yeah, and I love the way that she talked about the algorithms with uh, social media mm -hmm. and how they, you know, collect data and all of that good stuff. I mean, I was intrigued. I was like, tell me more, tell me more. I want to know more. <laughs> and it's funny because when I started in this position, I never heard the term AI before. I've heard artificial intelligence, but you know, we have a lot of acronyms and abbreviations. So it was nice for her to be able to break down AI, DM, and what was the other one? Um, ML and DL. So DL. machine I... learning and deep learning. Deep yep. learning. Okay, yep. I got my letters mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> Still learning. Yes. But uh, Sophie, it was really cool because she talked about how uh, Python is one of those introductory, uh, there it is, courses that can get you on the mission or on the path to do artificial intelligence as well. So if you at home are thinking about starting that journey, make sure that you go to IT Pro TV and check out our courses and you can be just like Eva. But Sophie, we have a lit tip of the week. So let's jump in and hear about what that looks like. So our little tip of the week has to do with, like you just said, learning coding is a great way to get started in AI and in machine learning. So we do offer some courses at IT Pro TV on that. We have an introductory course to Python. We have programming fundamentals. Um, if you've started learning but you want a chance to kind of apply what you've learned, we have an applied fundamentals course called Guess the Number. It'll let you hone your programming skills by just building something simple. And our CompTIA fundamentals course also has some information about programming and about software. Um, it's really useful to know when you're getting into deep learning. And if you're still not really sure that you want to commit to a course or start that process. We actually do have a video on the IT Pro TV YouTube channel called Five Steps to Get Started Learning Python. So that's definitely something to check out uh, if you're thinking about getting started. And that's our lit tip of the week. Oh my word, I love that. I love that Sophie dug a little bit deeper into it mm -hmm. because I know what's in the library, but understanding what exactly to start with is so helpful. Thank you, Sophie. It really is. And honestly, I never heard of Python again until I started working here at IT Pro TV. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's a computer language and I believe our guest was the first person, woman, that I know that speaks Python. So you gotta love it. <laughs> yes, you know, not French, not Spanish, Python. Python, that's, cool. that's right, that's right. <laughs> all right, well, you know, speaking of women, because this show is all about women and ladies, let's go ahead and check out this week's Woman of the Week, our WOW.
our wow this week, her name is Catherine Pauline. She's from Quebec in Canada. Uh, she's an AI research scientist at Volta Charging, which is an American electric vehicle infrastructure company. She's been there since November 2021, but she's held several positions before that that have to do with being an AI specialist and an AI research scientist. She attended, I'm going to butcher this pronunciation, but um, Université de Moncton. Oh, sounded amazing. University of Moncton. That sounds nice. It's French, and I don't speak French. I don't speak Python, and I don't speak French. So Good job. <laughs> I never claimed to be bilingual. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a French language university. She earned her bachelor's of science in mathematics and computer science, and then her master's in computer science. She's been working in AI ever since, and that's our woman of the week. All right. Very, very cool. Very I love impressive. it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I am loving this voyage of ladies in tech. You know, we continue to learn about different ladies that are inspirational in the tech industry. And then I'm told we've been inspiring a few, too, because we've been getting a lot of people to reach out to us on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on Twitter. So uh, make sure you connect with us there as well. Oh my gosh, absolutely, great point. Well, you can actually nominate a woman by going to our socials, but Sophie, how do we get in touch with this woman of the week? So Catherine is actually available on Instagram at the AI Girl. She's available on Twitter at Kath M. Pauline, and she's also on YouTube under the AI Girl. She's got a couple videos uploaded on cryptography and creating your own machine learning environment. So if you wanna see more of what she does, definitely check those out. Oh my word, all right, that's really cool. I love being able to connect with people on socials. It makes you feel more connected and you can ask some questions, but I think that this is the moment in our show where we should have a motivational moment with Kelly. Today we're going to talk about life's journey. You know, there's always going to be bumps, detours, and unexpected stops along the way. But never let the stumble in the road be the end of your journey. Ooh, that's a good <laughs> quote. I think so many times we see the obstacle and many times we stop right. and we think, okay, we can't get around this. This is way too hard. But even in our interview talked about inspiring women to get beyond that right. um, to push through any obstacle. So great quote, Kelly. Thank you, thank you. And you know, it reminds me of even my voyage, you know, um, there's been times where I've been discouraged and like, oh my gosh, what is this? You know, especially when I was taking uh, ITIL 4, it was like, oh my gosh, this is tedious. It's a lot of time. I don't understand some of this jargon and lingo, but I kept going and um, hey, good news getting ready to take the big exam. So. Yes. And I love that bit about detours too, because I think that sometimes maybe the journey changes a little, so it's not quite the same as it was, but it doesn't mean that you stop. I know that right. I started in college as a business major, and I know that that doesn't fit me at all. Right. But I started as a business major, and I just wasn't doing well, and I didn't like the classes, and I talked to an advisor, and the advisor was like, I would just consider other options, maybe college isn't for you, and I just panicked. Mm -hmm. And I ended up switching into telecommunication and thriving and doing so much better. So my journey changed a little. I took yeah. a detour, but instead of just dropping out or, you know, going to another university or going back home. Right. I was like, no, I'm going to find a different avenue. Yeah. And it ended up working out well. So I think the bit about detours as well is definitely important. Definitely. And the good news is, guys, we want to share with you that Sophie is graduating in August. Ooh, Yay. Sophie. So she never gave up. So mission accomplished. Mission High accomplished. Five. Long distance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, congratulations to Sophie and to you if you're pushing through uh, certifications or changing your career path. You can see all of us uh, graduate into the tech field coming from different areas and uh, I think that's the best advice is pushing through any obstacles. So thank you so much to uh, Kelly for that motivational moment but we encourage you to reach out to us on all of our social media platforms Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and LinkedIn wherever your socials lead you we'd love to find you. Sophie is fantastic with engaging we'd love to hear about a nominated wow and just to hear about future topics you'd like to see on the show so make sure you're connected with us but thank you for joining this episode of Ladies in Tech. We'll see you next time every Wednesday at 4 p.m.